Okay, doon sa uh, Baptist Confession of Faith of 1689, um, there are 32 points that the Baptists of that time on 1689 said that they have to write down exactly what they believe. And it, it is very helpful to write down almost all churches, local churches today, also have a writing of what they believe in. And the purpose of writing on what you believe in is so that for the generations to come, uh, the hope is that they will stick to what they believe in. Now, having said that, uh, a document is, such as this is a human-made document. And so it, it is not scriptures. So we are looking at what they say they believe in. And so we will double check and find out if this is exactly the same thing as what we believe in today. So yun ang purpose nun. And also, if you are part of a local church, then um, hopefully uh, you also have a written document kayo in every local church that you say that you believe in. Now, ang point one is that what do they believe about the Bible? And almost every church today will say, we believe in the Bible. Pero ang question is, what we believe about the Bible? Kasi meron iba, like I said, for example, I'll go to the extreme. Uh, the Mormons, if you say, do you believe in the Bible? Of course they believe in the Bible, they will say. But on top of the Bible, they actually have a other books uh, the Great of Pearl Price, uh, the, uh, the Book of uh, the Pearl of Great Price, and the Book of Mormons. So, on top of the Bible, they have something else that is more important and what is being taught uh, on top of the Bible. Uh, the Jehovah's Witness, for example, they have their own translation called the New World Translation, which is a corrupted version of the translation from the Hebrew Bible. The Catholic Bible, on the other hand, have exactly the same Bible as we do, except na meron silang mga dinagdag na six other books. Now, as far as having a Bible study, for example, with a Catholic person, pag sinabi nilang, eh, yung Bible mo, Protestant Bible yan eh. Uh, the truth of the matter is, you can just tell them, well, if you don't feel comfortable with using a uh, a, a Protestant Bible, Protestant. then you can Bible. I mean, no problem. Because in the end, every single book of the New Testament is exactly the same. Um, ang Old Testament, ang pinagkaiba, all you have to understand is, ano yung mga books ng what we call apocryphal books? Apocryphal books are six books that includes Maccabees, Tobit, Judith, mm -hmm. uh, Maccabees 1, Maccabees 2, and uh, two or three more. Basta anim yan lahat. Um, and typically, when you have a Bible study anyway, for example, the book of Romans or the book of John, then no, no problem. You can use a Catholic Bible. And more importantly is how do they view the Bible? Because in the Catholic Church, for example, yes, they totally believe that the Bible is the Word of God. But in practice, tradition is what is more important. And uh, uh, yung mga sacraments. And so kung maga ang Bible is just on the sideline. Hindi siya yung, yung main thing. While uh, for us evangelicals, for us Christians, the Bible is the main thing. And if you recall from the very start, itong writing ng uh, Baptist of 1689, they said that the Bible, if you go to the very first one, let's go to the very first one. Okay. Ano ba yan? Okay. The Dollar Scripture is the only tayla, sufficient. Sufficient. Certain. Sure. And infallible rule of all saving knowledge, faith, and obedience. So, this is a very strong statement saying that the Bible is complete. You don't have to add anything else. And uh, it is sufficient. Complete na lahat. It is certain. It is uh, very specific. You can rely on it. And it is infallible. And that is because it is the word of God. 
Okay, so those are very strong statements that they're saying that then he says that even though the Bible is complete, the, the, the nature, the creation of God, the sky, the moon, the birds, etc., can also manifest the goodness, wisdom, and power of God, making man inexcusable not to know God creation. Yet, they are not sufficient to give that knowledge of God and His will, which is necessary unto salvation. So in the end, even if you understand that uh, through a bird, a butterfly, or a caterpillar, that there is a creator, it is not sufficient to, to have salvation until you have the words of Scripture. So therefore, it, is please, it pleases the Lord at, at Sandrai at many various times, and in diverse manners to reveal himself and to declare that his will unto his church and afterward for the better preserving and propagating of the truth and for the more sure establishment and comfort of the church against the corruption of the flesh, the malice of Satan and of the world. Here's the most important part to commit the same unto writing. What is the same? The same knowing of the goodness, of the wisdom of God, not just in nature, but into writing, so that in writing you prevent uh, the errors caused by Satan, by the world, and the corruption of the flesh. So any question on this? And question is, is this how you believe what the Bible is all about? Yan ang importante. Because uh, even though if your local church says the, um, you know, we believe in the Bible, the question would be, for example, to prevent from error, do you have prophets that would say, you know, the Lord said? So is it truly sufficient? Is it truly uh, uh, infallible? Okay. And what... what when you read the Bible, remember that it is God speaking. Correct. Yeah. Pero kasi nga, ang, ang sabi ko, many, almost all local churches will say, it is the word of God. No problem with that. It is the word of God. Pero, meron sila mga, you know, mga word of wisdom and, uh, you know, uh, um, the Lord said, which is no longer in scriptures. These are typically said by either official prophets of the church and or maybe a pastor na parang charismatic in, in, his, in his background that um, scriptures is uh, not enough. Meron laging dinadagdag. So how do you deal with that, Mike, if you encounter that? Uh, several ways. Number one, if you are in leadership and if you have an influence in the church, then you will want to, you know, uh, either inform uh, and or warn or tell them that it should not be the case. Then if there is nothing you can do about it, um, personally, ako, I'll just move out. Ako rin. I would do the same. Um, if you do not have any voice in that church yeah um, but you, it will be good to let the leadership know um, on why you're living because you know when you say leadership depends on how big the church is when you say leadership uh, there are some leadership leaders na they're not aware kasi, or maybe they are having the same feeling and the same attitude uh, as you, pero uh, hindi rin, they're hoping na siguro meron ng, ah, hindi lang pala ako, meron din para mga ibang tao that they feel this way. Parang ganun. Mm. And you see, when I say sa leadership kasi, it's not that all leadership are really planning to have, you know, yung mga uh, prophets, prophets na yan. Sometimes it's, there are just certain individual leaders na who are very influential na nagkakaroon ng ganyan. For example, a local church dito sa San Diego, 
uh, which uh, I was attending before. Dati, you know, okay lang. You know, I mean, you know, it's not perfect, pero okay lang. Um, but since I left that uh, for a while now, nagkaroon sila ng mga quote-unquote new members who are very charismatic. And so the influence of those new members um, na ano, na, na-influence yung buong leadership. At, at pag na-influence mo yung buong leadership, then the whole church uh, becomes like that. So they have even, you know, sometimes uh, yung isang tao doon, uh, he will speak as if he is the father. Kung baga parang na ano siya, parang na, tag to? Parang na possess by the father. He will speak, oh, I am, I'm Abba Father, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, kagaya, ni, kagaya ni Kibuloy. I am the anointed, okay. appointed oh. son of God. Oh. oh. <clears throat> so that is where, again, itong group na to, the 1689 Baptist group, they wanted to make sure that the scriptures is sufficient. You, know, you don't need to add anything. You have to stick to the word and to the word alone. Okay? So, then they said, which makes scriptures to be most necessary. Uh, you don't need to have a building to have a local church. You don't need to have drum set or musical instrument. You, what you need to have is the word of God. Um, mm. It is most necessary. Um, and not just a literal word of God. Especially in leadership, the leaders must be properly and totally immersed in the word of God. So the moment you have Bible teachers and or preachers and or worship leaders who are not immerse in the word of God. Nako delikado. Um, lalo na ngayon, when we are warned by scriptures, especially in the last days, um, that there will be a lot of apostasy. Apostasy is not only with the local congregation. Apostasy have crept in into leadership. You have board of elders who are not believers. You have pastors who are not believers and or other um, leadership uh, person who are not truly in Christ. So that's why they run the church as if it's just a rotary club, you know, keep the, keep the people in, uh, invite as many people and just don't talk about uh, the gospel because the gospel is very offensive, very offensive mm-hmm. on gospel. Oh, technically, when you are really uh, a gospel-centered local church, you will be driving people away. Because, you know, uh, mas- masyadong ano nga, insulting ang, ano, ang gospel. You are on your way to hell. You're a sinner. Your religiosity, your goodness, your morality has, you know, uh, will bring you to hell. Your, your, your self-righteousness. So... And then itong last portion particular, ay pa nila, which I personally agree, and uh, not all churches, again, agree on this, that those former ways of God's rebe- revealing His will, how is that? Uh, in the past, through prophets, through donkeys, through the clouds, through a voice of thunder, and so on and so forth, unto people are now ceased have stopped and that his way of communication is through his words. Um, Again, typically a charismatic church, um, they do not believe in the cessation of um, the way God communicates. Um, You know, again, meron pa mga prophets, uh, word of wisdom, yung mga ganun. Uh, So, the question right now is, is this your local church stand? Is this your personal stand? Um, okay. Any thoughts, question on that? Alam mo, ngayon natututo ko sa mga pinag-aaralan natin, Mike. Uh-huh. Mas nagiging very critical ako 
at lalo ko nakikita yung mga faults oh, na yeah. nangyayari. For sure. Yan talaga ang result. That's the reason why I keep on praying now for God to lead me to, like as you said, to a small church. Basta sola scriptura. Uh-huh. Kasi most of the churches now, ganyan ng style nila eh. Parang paramihan lang. Then they follow a sort of a menu. They give it to all their D12 leaders to yeah. be spread out. Ganon. Yeah. Sharina, alam mo, during the pandemic, di ba, nine months kami dyan. Ah, no. After Yolanda. Uh-huh. Nine months kami dyan sa Prince Plaza, Sarina. Eh, doon kami nag-church sa taas. Uh-huh. Sa, oo, yung Baptist. So, small group lang talaga. Mga 20 lang kami. So, uh-huh. talaga, sola scriptura talaga. Yeah. So, Saan yan sa Prince Plaza? Sa Makati? Oo, oh, oh. oh, di ba, doon kami nakatira. Sa Manila sa yan. Oo. Oh. Hmm. Oh, you pala ate. Eh. Makati Grace MGIM, Makati Grace International Ministry. Yung pastor namin, si Pastor Rene Fotalan. Sa ano 'yan? Abwe yata, Abwe. Yung Baptist talaga. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Pero k- kasi nga today, no, nowadays, yung yung denomination name doesn't mean much anymore. Um, even they say it's a Baptist, in the end you will have to s- stay there, know them, understand ko ano ang uh, way of teaching, etc. Kasi, yeah. ano na eh, um, uh, infiltrated na lahat ng mga denominations na eh. You can no longer count on the word Baptist nowadays. At saka most, mostly, not all, but mostly, most of these preachers and pastors are marketing strategies na sila and they use the church. Yeah. And the biggest uh, influence of marketing strategy is Rick Warren. Rick Warren is the one who ano talaga na, na mass produce niya yung ano eh, yung uh, marketing style. Kaya there is such a thing as what you call seeker friendly service. So ang seeker friendly kasi ang ang whole purpose ng seeker friendly is to attract the goats. Okay? No. Of course, when they say ano, seeker friendly ang ang idea nila, ah, kailangan kasi madala yung mga tao sa church para dun sa church ma-share yung gospel. That is, you know, on paper, kumbaga. Pero uh, in practice, hindi rin nangyayari. Ang tendency ngayon is to keep the ghosts inside, make them happy, and, uh, you know, give them some Christian, you know, some Christian lingo and some Christian attitude uh, and morality. Uh, pero hanggang ganun na lang. Hmm. Pero alam mo, buti na lang, praise God, that I was really given wisdom. Kasi napansin ko sa CCF, kaya nga ako mal sa D12 ko, yun ang nangyayari. Sabi ko, I'm not here to socialize because if I only want socialization, I have so many other friends. Mm-mm. I'm here to learn the Bible. Mm. Hindi sila makakibo. Kasi parang... Alam mo yun, parang pinapadaplis-daplis lang yung mga verses and we don't really chop yeah. it and go deep into it. Kasi in the end, um, pasapasa yan eh. So from leadership and so on, sometimes uh, ang dilution, you know, na- na-dilute, it could be that the leadership really has a good intention of sola scriptura. But um, as you go down the, the different levels, na- na-dilute. So for example, Uh, who can become a cell group leader? Oftentimes, that cell group leader is not properly indoctrinated yet. So typically, it's because he has a personality of being able to handle, you know, baka, baka businessman siya, so syempre meron siya mga employee, so therefore, he, he must know how to handle. So y- yun ang ano, kasi ang typically ang small group, the whole idea ng cell groups is the cell group leader is a facilitator. True. So, kaya uh, typically, ang mga churches will say, oh, you don't really need to be a Bible school graduate. Hindi ka talaga kailangan in-depth sa Word of God kasi you mm-hmm. will only facilitate. At saka meron kang agenda paper. Yung agenda paper mo, yan ang mga question. Tanungin mo lang yan and then you just facilitate it. That yan is the source ko, of the problem. 
Yan yung CCF style. Yeah, and at, and totoo lang ate, hindi lang yan ang CCF. Almost all uh, cell cell group uh, church, uh, cell group and cell group uh, cell group church, yan ang style. Kaya that... mu- multiplication is the key. Huh. And having said that, I personally ate, ako, uh, and Irish can attest to this, that is also what I've done at TBC before. Remember Irish? Uh, from, from yeah. Before. So, uh, that when I first started, okay, uh, ito, 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 ikaw, kayo, sa group leader, okay? So, mm-hmm. every week, ito yung agenda. I will prepare the agenda based on the sermon. Ito yung mga question. Tanongin mo lang. Yeah. So, magsama-sama. Pero the reality is, uh, most cell group leaders are not properly indoctrinated with the yes. Word of God. That's just the reality. Kaya, kaya maraming mga maram, paramihan ng cell leaders sa CCF. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And almost all all large churches, uh, yung small group leaders, uh, hindi ano, hindi. Uh, I mean, hindi lang sa group leaders, even Sunday school teachers. Naku, ang babaw. Ang babaw masyado. Uh, so, that is a sad thing. Um, very, very sad because wala na yung scriptures dun sa teachings nila. Parang ano nga eh. Anybody yeah. can just follow those, the menu of the church and then yeah. follow it. Question and answer. That's it. Yeah. So, Program. Mm-hmm. Program. I think it's time because the different kinds of Bible, uh, Roman Catholics Bible, we have six additional books in the Old Testament. So everything is the same uh, except that the um, uh, six books. Now, having said that, version of the Bible and the translation sometimes may old English, meron ibang paraphrase, meron iba literal. The same thing with the Catholic Bible. They also have different versions. Okay, pero ang pinagkaiba is the six books of the Old Testament which are called apocryphal books. Okay? Apro? Apocrypha. Uh, eso na. Apok? Apokrypha. Ito. Ito. Pero my man-made books yan. Hindi Apo, yan okay. God's breath, di ba? These are all man-made books, right? Um, well, that is why Apokrypha... Let me go there, okay? Um, here you go. The, book, the books commonly called Apokrypha <clears throat> not being of divine inspiration mm. are no part of the canon of rule of scripture and are therefore no authority to the church of God, nor to be any otherwise approved or made use of them other, here you go, human writings. So in other words, they are still writings. They are historical. Uh, you can read them for the purpose of uh, history, but they are not part of the canon of scriptures of the Jewish Bible. So ano ba yun, Mike? Maccabees? Uh, hindi ko memorize lahat, but it's Maccabees, Tobit. Judith. Ang Maccabees, Maccabees 1 and 2. Maccabees 1, Maccabees 2, Tobit, Judith, Judith tapos 2 more. Hindi uh, ko na memorize kung ano pa. Pero Mike, I have a question. Why did the Catholic uh, why did the Apro- Catholic Church embrace it as part of uh, their Bible? Because they have doctrines that they can pull out from this by from these books. For example, the doctrine of purgatory. The doctrine of mm. purgatory from these apocrypha books, there was a, a, um, a situation doon that the, uh, that the officer, a soldier, prayed for the dead. So based on that, uh, they have created the doctrine of purgatory that you can actually pray for the dead and that after after the death, uh, you know, the eternal destination of a person can still be ano. Pwede pang uh, kung baka pwede pang mag- magbago. Magbago ang decision ng panginoon. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, That's fun. Okay. Di ba nila alam God is sovereign? Uh, in ano in verbal confession, yes, they would say. I mean. Kahit mga evangelical, you, you ask today, do you believe that God is sovereign? Yes, God is sovereign. Yeah, people, it's no problem for people cognitively <clears throat> to say that God is sovereign. 
but uh, in practice, in actual belief, it doesn't, hindi yun na nangyayari. So do yeah. you consider these people apostates? Uh, for sure. Because the mere fact that uh, their, their gospel, remember it's, it all boils down to the gospel. Mm. Hmm. And if their gospel is not in Christ alone and not repentance and faith, then that's, not, that's no gospel at all. Apostle Paul said in Galatians, if we or an angel preach a okay. different gospel, let him be eternally condemned. Anathema. So, and that's the whole point of the book of John, diba? Even si John is saying, if your belief is not the true belief that, uh, you know, kasi the devil believes, there are vain belief, walang gamit na belief. So, it must be genuine belief. And not only that, you, might have, you, you must need to have the right Jesus. Now, in Catholicism, for example, Jesus and si Mary is a comedatrix of Jesus. Then it is not in Jesus alone. So it's a different Jesus. Okay, and then the Jehovah's Witness. Uh, you have to watch out for this. It's called New World Translation. That is the only translation that I would say totally corrupted. Uh, you would not want to participate in any of that, the Jehovah's Witness created their own translation of the Bible, um, fixing, changing, adjusting words and sentences for the purpose of supporting their doctrines. I ganon. Oh, so you can use King James, New International Version, the Living Translation, but watch out for New World Translation. Okay, Jehovah's Witness, yan. New world. Yeah. And then, of course, you have the Book of Mormons. They say they believe in the Bible. Pag umiikot-ikot sila, kakatok sa pintuan nyo, they will carry the Bible. But when you start studying and reading and understanding, they have the Book of Mormons and the Pearl of Great Price. Okay? So, Ayun ang promote nila, yung sarili nilang libro. Correct. Hmm. Uh -oh. Pero pag ano pa lang, yung umiikot-ikot pa lang sila, Sabi nila, we believe in the Bible. Kumbaga, front nila yung Bible, introductor. Uh -huh. Yeah. And they, they will say they truly believe in the Bible, except that they do not read the Bible. Same thing with the Catholics. Catholics will say they believe in the Bible. They will, they will say it is the word of God. They will say, you know, um, uh, it is complete, infallible, etc. Pero it, it's not what they practice. The mere fact that they do not read it. So, Grabe. You know, now that you're explaining all of these things, Mike, uh -oh. I could already imagine and see how very, very narrow and very, very few will enter the gates of heaven. Yeah, that's very true. Kaya nga, sabi ko, ako, this is my personal view. My personal view is this. When the rapture happens, uh, it's not it's not like you know, millions of people na nawala. I don't think so. I think De, um, yan. Ngayon, yan na rin ang belief ko. <laughs> yeah. yeah, kasi even in evangelical churches, like I mentioned, um, not too many. Um, and the Bible has, has, has told us, you know, it's not many. It's not a gate. Few will find it. It's only a remnant. Those are the, the words of scripture. Yes. Remnants. A remnant. It's a small number of people. Left so, over. So I think, you know, in even in any local church, um, not too many. But at the same time, I think that after the church is taken out, uh, many of those apostates, hopefully during a time of tribulation, um, doon talaga sila magiging seryoso. May so, chance pa sila magbago. Yeah. People still can, can still be saved during a tribulation. Yeah, because God really wants all of us to be saved anyway. Yeah. Peter, yeah, he doesn't want anyone to perish and that he wants everyone to come to repentance. Diba? Peter, yun. 
Okay, so point five. I think we, I don't know where we left out from last week. Uh, the, the Baptist of the first, uh, 16, of 1689 said, we may be moved and induced by the testimony of the Church of God to an high and reverent esteem of the Holy Scriptures and heavenliness of the matter, the efficacy of the doctrine and the majesty of the style, the consent of the parts, the scope of the whole, which is to give all glory to God, the full discovery it makes of the, of the only way of man's salvation and many other incomparable excellence and entire perfections thereof are arguments whereby it does abundantly evidence itself to be the word of God. <laughs> Haba. This is a running sentence and the sentence is not even done. The whole point so far, what he is saying, that yes, people can actually see and believe that the word of God is majestic. It is the word of God. It can uh, make a person, uh, you know, moral. Um, it is abundantly, uh, you know, has an evidence that it is the word of God. Okay, so far sinasabi. Yet, here's the next line. Yet, pero, notwithstanding our full persuasion and assurance of the infallible truth and divine authority that they're off. So, what is he saying? That it cannot truly assure us that it is infallible and it is the divine authority that it is from the inward work of the Holy Spirit bearing witness by and with the word in our hearts. So, sa kahaba-haba ng sentence, because remember, this is Old English, okay? 1689. Their whole point is this. People can go to church, believe in God, believe in the Bible, believe it is the Word of God, even appreciates the Word of God, memorize the Word of God, study the Word of God, believe um, it is a direct uh, you know, a revelation from the Word of God. But unless you have the Holy Spirit. Then, ito na yung line kanina. The full persuasion, yeah, the keyword is full persuasion. You know, the, the, the full assurance and the full infallibility of the truth and divine authority will only come to those who have the Holy Spirit. That is why true discipleship are for those who are in Christ. Because you can have a discipleship class and people will keep on coming and they will understand the, the superficial instruction of the word of God. They will know, they'll become more moral because they understand do not commit adultery, do not lie. Do not, you know, honor your mother and father. And they'll become more moral. But in the end, only those who have the Holy Spirit will be fully persuaded, will be fully assured, will be fully understanding that it is the infallible divine authority of God. Any comment on that? <clears throat> Kaya yung evangelism is the most important. Uh, oftentimes we have discipleship classes sa mga local churches or even in Bible studies attended by non-believers which means they do not have the Holy Spirit. So they might appreciate the, the teaching. They might appreciate the, you know, the lessons learned. Pero it does not, they're not fully, fully persuaded and not fully assured. Does it make sense? Mm. Mm. Kaya the, the, the question is are you truly in Christ? Kasi otherwise uh, surface lang ng, ng scriptures it, it, it will not fully you know hindi talaga it will not penetrate I mean yeah, because mm -mm. On, only true Christian read the word of God and spend time reading the word of God yeah and and, and uh, you, you and I the, the people who have the Holy Spirit are, is testified by the Holy Spirit and is confirmed by the Holy Spirit that what you are reading is from the Word of God and it gives mm. us true understanding. Um, let me see here. Ito ang verse na very important for us to understand. Jesus himself 
said this, John 16. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. So let us stop there. In other words, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then no one will guide you into all the truth. You can attend the best Bible teacher. Okay? You can go to a, you know, Sora Scriptura local church. But without the Holy Spirit, there is no confirmation inside of you. That is why people are looking for programs. Ano sa ba maganda yung program na church? Ano ba yung magandang na offer nila para sa mga bata, para sa mga, you know, and so on, para sa mga youth? Because their concern is not so much about the Word of God, but the other external, you know, uh, kumbaga sa Book of John na pinag-usapan natin, they are there for the festival. Oh, si Sarina, for example, right now, is saying, gusto ko na maghanap ng local church na talaga kung saan tinuturo yung Word of God. Because mm-hmm. now you are no longer seeking the festival event. You're done with it. Mm-hmm. Hindi na. So, bakit yun? Ano nangyari? Hindi ba mas komportable sa malaking church? Air-conditioned, uh, you know, you have all the program, may women's <laughs> ministry, may this ministry, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Laging may activities. May laging may activity, you know. Uh, when you learn something like what you're preaching, then hmm. you have a basis of comparison. Then you become hmm. discontented. Correct. When you become Discontented. Yes. You want some place else where you will continue to grow and grow yeah. deeper. But let me suggest this, Ate. What made you change the way you think is not because si Mike ang naguturo. I it's personally not, believe. I personally uh, believe what has happened is actually you have the spirit the of truth. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yes. That's. Kasi before, maski na anong basahin mo sa akin, hindi ko naiintindihan. Lagi kong sinasabi, nahihilo ko, hindi ko maintindihan. Mm-hmm. Par- uh-huh. not- but now, I really know that the Spirit is in me because it's so easy for me to discern. Yeah. So that's why you, you said, He will guide you into all the truth. So kaya itong whole point ng point five, sinasabi nila, if you are not in Christ, yes, you will appreciate the teaching. Uy, ang galing. Magaling yung pastor namin, uh, etc. But you do especially, not have... Especially those, especially those uh, prosperity gospel, di ba? Yeah. Kasi charismatic yung pastor. Eh. <laughs> you know, bomb, bombastic. Talaga, wow. Very powerful. Um, even the Apostle Paul said, uh, sabi niya pa, we did not come to you with eloquence. But we come to you with the power of God. What is the power of God? The word of God is the power of mm-hmm. God. So you can go to a, you know, super, you know, uh, yung, yung style na yung parang dahanda, parang kumbaga, ano bang word? Um, it, wala siyang, you know, charisma. But you will get to understand that yung teaching niya is solid. Okay? So, you know, importante. So that is what point five is saying. Yes, you can appreciate the the local church for whatever they are offering, but until you have the Holy Spirit in you, the Bible is less use, not useless, but less use. Okay, because yeah, na jaling Bible, karga karga yung Bible. Use. Okay, you can quote verses left and right, uh, but oftentimes it is uh, you know out of context. Um, Y- yun man ang nangyayari. Okay, um, saan ba yung sa script? Let me find that, that word na... So Mike, mas na 50 years ka na nag-aaral ng Bible, if the Spirit is not in you... Wala pa rin. Walang gamit. Wala. Walang gamit. Wala, walang gamit. L- like I said, uh, may konting gamit, less use. Okay? Hindi, hindi siya totally useless, but uh, less use. <laughs> less use. Okay. Let me bring you to look at this. And this is a warning for kay Timothy nga, especially in the last days. Sabi pa ni Paul kay Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Ano ba yung cursor ko? Okay. 
Chapter 3? 15, 15, 17. No, no. Remember ito ang warning niya? There will be terrible times in the last days, etc., etc., right? That's the warning. And then, uh, he speaks about the people. Verse 2. People in the last days, ito ang warning, people will be lovers mm-hmm. of themselves. Oh, may like a selfie. Okay. <laughs> Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, ano pa? without okay. love, unforgiving, treacherous, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Okay? No, this is very true. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god okay mauna yung kung kung wala kaming outing uh, puta ako sa church uh, kung wala akong gagawin magatin ako ng bible study okay so yeah, lovers of pleasure ito ang verse 5 ang gusto ko sabihin watch out for this having a form of godliness wow religious but that's a keyword but denying It's power. What what do you mean by power? The power for salvation. Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Merong form of godliness. Maayos, makabihis, may kargang Bible. They say that they are Christians. Uh, but denying its power. Denying the gospel. See that? And that is more and more how people look like today. The last oh, yeah. days. Okay. And we are one. So in, in a way, we should not be surprised um, na yan ang nangyayari. Yan talaga ang mangyayari. And in a way, for me, it's an encouragement in a sense because that tells me that I belong in the last days. And in the last days, I'm looking forward uh, to the return of Christ. Okay, tingnan mo to. Uh, Pero at the same time, Mike, nakakaawa rin. Correct. Dahil sa kadami-damihan, how can you reach out sa kadami-damihan ng ignorance? Yeah. Uh, again, you, you, you work with whom you have influence. I mean, We, mm-hmm. you, can, you might not be able to reach the world, but you see, in the end, like we, we said before, evangelism primarily is the work of God. Yes. So that's one thing we have to understand. It is the work of God. Second, uh, in the book of Luke. Meron na akong question sa'yo, Mike. Can uh, you answer? How do you categorize uh, Mother Teresa of India? Well, he's a, she's a Catholic. And uh, her belief is totally Catholic. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I will not question her, quote-unquote, her good works. But her good works has nothing to do with salvation. Mm-hmm. You, you can be the best person, the best father, the best mother in the world. But uh, if you still believe in your good works for your salvation, then it doesn't mean anything. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even Maria Teresa, for sure, have lied. For sure, probably have looked lustfully uh, and other kinds of sin. Lahat, lahat na. So here's the encouragement. Okay, uh, Luke 21. When Jesus was explaining about all the things that will be happening in the end, when these things begin to take place, I love this word, begin to take place. Hindi pa the fullness. Hindi pa ng fullness ng lahat mga wars, rumors of war. When they just start to begin to take place, he says, stand up and lift up your heads. Why? Because your redemption is drawing near. Woo! The more we see apostasy, the more we see wars and rumors of wars, the more we see famines, the more we see a lot of uh, the youth 
dishonoring their mother and father. The more we see people who are lovers of money rather than lovers of God, uh, this is the sign when these things begin to take place. Stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. So, the Holy Spirit uh, is what makes us understand. Um, and that's why when the more we study the Word of God, um, the Holy Spirit will confirm in us. It, what, what is sad is this, that there are true Christians with the Holy Spirit and yet ignorant of the Word of God. Because the Holy Spirit will only confirm the Word of God that you have you know, you, you, you have absorbed. Okay? So, let me jump now. Point six. The whole counsel of God concerning all things necessary for his own glory, man's salvation, faith, and life is either, here you go, expressly set down or necessarily contained in the Holy Scriptures. So everything we need to know about salvation, faith, and life is clearly expressly written in the Word of God. That's why it is complete. Okay? It is complete. So the question is, is that what you believe? Or is that something uh, the Bible, kung ano, hindi ako ng advice kay something else. Now looking for advice for somebody else, that is good. As long as the person giving you advice is giving you an advice coming from the Word of God, mm -hmm. written in its or given in its proper context. The problem is this: there are many so-called counselors, but their counseling is coming from the wisdom of the world instead of the wisdom of scriptures. Yeah. True. Okay. So. And then here you go. Unto which nothing at any time is to be added, whether by new revelation of the Spirit or traditions of man, which is the biggest problem of uh, the Catholic Church. They have new revelation. What new revelation? Ah, the assumption of Mary. That's additional. Ah, the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, purgatory. That's a new tradition. Uh, ah, the, uh, what they call the indulgences that you can offer a mass uh, for the dead. These are old traditions and you know, new revelation that they claim. How about adding ano, Filipino santos also? Yeah, isa pa yun. <laughs> Who are to be the saints? Uh, kailangan, in, in the Catholic uh, doctrine, there is what you call canon, canonization. That is when a person is officially you know, become a saint. Saint. Uh, yeah. Kailangan daw may miracle na ginawa. I don't know yeah. how many miracles to be proclaimed <laughs> as a saint. Exactly. You, 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 again, that's what they believe. So that's the danger. But the, the, the Baptist confession, they're saying, no, the canon of scriptures is close. Sarado. You cannot add new revelation. Or traditions of spirit. Now, in, if you are coming from the charismatic, typically it's a new revelation of the spirit. Iyan ang problema. Sa Catholic Church, typically it's tradition. But that's also, why, Mike. Uh -oh. That's why before we read the Bible, we should pray first to the Holy Spirit and ask for wisdom for yes. us to understand. And, and, Kasi kung yeah. minsan, pabalik-balik, hindi mo, hindi mo maintindihan eh. Yeah. Uh, this is where now teachers would have to come in. Uh, as we will see later, I think point seven, point eight, that there are people in the body of Christ who are gifted by the Lord to the congregation to properly explain scriptures. And to those... Ikaw yun. Ikaw yun. Those, ano? Ikaw yun. Oh, probably. Okay. So... Kasi, but when scriptures is taught to the congregation who have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you will confirm it and say, Ay, 
Oo nga pala. Ay, ganito pala. Klaro talaga. Di ba? I think that is what you're feeling uh, when you that attend the Bible study. Experiencing. That's what I'm experiencing. Exactly. Mm. So, let me, uh, one more dito. Uh, the warning of scriptures in Revelation 22. This is the Lord speaking. He says in verse 22, uh, chapter 22, verse 19. Ito ang sabi niya. Okay. Aha. Oop. Bakit na wala? Look. Uh, ito. And if anyone takes words away from the scroll of this uh, scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this scroll. You cannot add anything else. Okay? So, that is what we have to be careful about. And people keep on practicing on adding, subtracting, uh, you know, uh, out of context, uh, teaching from the Word of God. You know, problem. Okay. Nevertheless, we acknowledge the inward illumination of what? Of the Spirit of God. Spirit of God. To be necessary for the saving, here you go, understanding of such things as are revealed in the Word of God. So, again, if you have the Bible without the Holy Spirit, you, you, you cannot fully understand it. Hmm. And then, here you go. Ito ko. And that there are some circumstances concerning the worship of God and government of the church. Okay, let's continue the next line. Common to human actions and societies which are to be ordered by the light of nature and Christian prudence. What does that mean? Christian prudence. Your personal study. Because you might have the Holy Spirit you could have the Bible, but if you are not prudent, okay, you, you are not uh, consistent, you are not exerting effort uh, in uh, studying the Word of God, di walang gamit. Kaya maraming, ano, maraming uh, Christiano, uh, pa ni Paul, I'm writing this to you so that you will not be ignorant. Uh, and daming Christiano who are ignorant. Uh, so, you need a Christian cautiousness. You need to watch out. What is the word saying? What is God saying in this text? Uh, what does he mean when he said this? So, I, I think this is where the giftings of a teacher really comes very strong. Um, typically, a, a teacher is very conscious of and, and very observant. Um, uh, or oh, oh, what the word of God is saying and if you take note dito Christian prudence according how? to the general rules of the word in other words you, you have to find out from the word itself what, that, what does it mean which are always to be observed so you know like I said nga, di ba, maraming Kristiyano, they always use Isaiah 53. By your stripes, you are healed. That is not the context. Hindi yun ang pinapag-usapan. Si Rick Same. Warren, that, that is why, you know, I personally think, think Rick Warren is a ano, apostate. How in the world hmm. can he use Galatians 2? Where, he, where Galatians 2 says, therefore, there is no Jew or Gentile, uh, uh, slave or free, male or female. And then he uses that verse to support the, uh, uh, the ordination of women. That verse have nothing to do with ordination. Corrupted. Oh, super corrupted. Isaiah 53 refers to our sin. Isaiah 53 is referring to our sin. 
Galatians 4 is, is, is in reference to those who are in Christ. To those who are in Christ, there is no more Jew or Gentile. There is no more male or female. Yun ang not, not, niya. Yeah, not, not your physical condition yeah. that you are healed. Right? By the way, mga LGBTQ, okay? Uh, lalo na dito sa America, the uh, United Methodist Church of America. They will use that verse and say there is now no more male or female. So that's that's why there's what you call gender neutral. That when a child, the child is born, uh, that child when he grows up, he or she can choose what gender he wants. That's what you call gender neutral. Okay. <laughs> Kaya. Uh, look at this again. Uh, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Mark. 12. Ito ang nangyayari sa mga taong ngayon. Itong mark na to. Uh, let me go. Mark 12.24. Ito ang situation. And it's not new. It happened even in the time of Christ. Are you not in error speaking to the teachers of the law because you do not know the scriptures? Now, Ironically, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are the people who know scriptures. Pero they do not have the Holy Spirit. That's why there is no inward illumination. Are there pastors today who do not know scriptures? Plenty. Andami. Even among pastors, the reality is this. There are only remnants of pastors. Mm. And scriptures is the power of God. Because it is the word of God. So if you don't know scriptures, you don't know the power of God. There's no salvation. You might have a large congregation, but large congregation doesn't mean anything. During the time of Christ, there's only one congregation, the Jewish congregation. And yet Jesus says, you brood of vipers, you children of the devil. Grabe magsalita ni Jesus, no? Matindi magsalita. <laughs> oh, that's why the warning in Galatians 1. So even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be eternally under God's curse. Curse. That is anathema. Okay, anathema, let them go to hell. That's a nice way of saying, you know, go to hell. Okay. Um, okay. So, are so clearly pro propounded and open in some places of scriptures or other that not only the learned but the unlearned in a due use of ordinary means may attain to a sufficient understanding of them. The basic salvation can be understood in scriptures even the unlearned. That is what uh, the, the, the group of uh, 1689 Baptist people have said. Because John, Apostle John, Apostle Peter, they were fishermen. And that's why the Pharisees uh, were saying, how can they be so knowledgeable when they are unschooled? Remember that? Uh, how can they be? Uh, that's, uh, let me see here. So Acts chapter 4. Look at the comment of the Pharisees and Sadducees concerning. Okay, here you go. When they saw the courage of Peter and John. The courage and the boldness to preach. Okay? When they saw the, the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled. Mga fishermen to. Mm. Unschooled na ordinary men. They were astonished. And they took note that this man had been with Jesus. So you want to find boldness 
the courage, what you need to do is to understand the Word of God. If you understand the Word of God, you will have the courage. And people will take note of that. People will take note of that. So, question, is that what is being taught in your local churches? Or is the uh, is it only for the the the, the, the doctorate and the, the businessman? Because uh, akala natin yung pamisa, automatically yung, yung successful in some area of business, for example, or a uh, an uh, government official. Oh, yan ang dapat maging teacher. Uh, dapat yan yung ano yung board member. Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, let me add yung the next. Acts 4.13, which is a very good verse. Let me add this one. Dagdag ko lang sa notes ko so that when I teach this again, ma-add itong verse na to, Acts 4.13. Okay? So, Point eight, the Old Testament is in Hebrew, uh, native language of the people, and part of it, by the way, is also in Aramaic, and the New Testament is in Greek. Okay, So, being immediately inspired by God and by His singular care and prov providence, take note of this, <clears throat> by God's singular care and providence, God Himself... kept pure in all ages. Therefore, authentic. So as in all controversies of religion, the church is finally to appeal to them. So what is he saying? That the, 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 the Baptist of 1689 says that the word of God from, from millennia, thousands of years ago, has been kept pure until today. So, especially for the Old Testament, this is where we really have to thank the Jews because the Jews are the one who kept copies of the scriptures from old until today. Okay? But because these original tongues are not known to all people, what he's saying is that therefore it requires translation. That is why we have translations today. Okay, so let me skip that one. Point nine. Any question, by the way, to the Hebrew and Greek? Okay. The infallible rule of interpretation of scriptures is the scripture itself. So, in other words, if you want to explain scriptures, use scriptures. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when there is a question about the true and full sense of any scripture, which is not manifold but one. It must be searched by other places that speaks more clearly. So let scripture, uh, in other words, the scripture is the best commentary of scriptures. Okay. Um, uh, skip Konayan, those are just verses. And finally, point 10. The supreme judge by which all controversies of religion are to be determined and all decrees of councils, opinions of ancient writers, doctrines of men, and private spirits are to be examined. Okay, there you go. To be examined and whose sentence we are to rest can be no other but the Holy Scripture. Delivered by the Spirit into which Scripture so delivered, our faith is finally resolved. So again, sola Scriptura. Scriptura. Whatever the pastor will say, whatever the Bible teacher will say, whatever the so-called uh, tongues or uh, prophet or whatever it may be, it has to be examined uh, against scriptures. This is now where we'll see the Bereans where they check the scriptures and see if what Paul said is true. Okay. Uh, let me add that one. Okay, any thoughts, comment, question?
that is um, what they believe. So the question for us is, is that what you believe? Is that what your church believe? And is that what your church is practicing? That's more important. Is that what that your church is practicing? So. Because only scripture is what we can depend on. Correct. But is, is that what is being practiced? Yeah. Okay. Or yung mga programs or things that is being done in the church, saan ba galing yung mga idea na yun? Uh, so mm -hmm. that is where we have to be careful about. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Any more thoughts? Dalawa lang baka may ni Iris? Yeah. Oo. Valedictorian. Valedictorian. Kaya pala hindi ko naririnig si Connie. Hindi mo ba nakikita? Hindi mo ba nakikita? Hindi mo nakikita ako dyan? Tatlo lang tayo ni Mike? Nakikita kita. Tatlo lang tayo. Yeah. Pero alam mo, Mike, very, very interesting yan because, you know, it's difficult to ask a church what they believe in and how do you go about that? And besides, they may ask you, why are you asking this? You've been coming to this church for a long time. Suddenly, you are curious. Yeah. Wala akong... Wala akong answer doon eh. Um, you know, the very reason why I have, ako for example, itong ministry na to, itong Bible study na to, and, and the people attending dito sa akin sa bahay, yung ano, pag Sundays dito sa US, hmm. they are all coming from different churches. They are not coming from, that, that is why I, I don't call it, itong grupo dito sabi ko, this is both a church and not a church. It is a church because it's a gathering of believers. And the Bible says, where two or three gather in my name, I I'll am be in their midst. midst. So that's a church. So in that sense, it is a church. But it is not a church in the sense where it is a local congregation, uh, you know, uh, signed up with the government and say we are so-and-so church. So in that sense, we are not. Uh, I, they are, are they still at the, attending their church? Yes. Oh. Yeah, not not all. Some of them attend uh, their local churches. Um, so my, for, exa for example, last week, itong past Sunday. You can call it a house church. Yes, pero kaya nga, it is both a church and not a church. Church in the sense, because that is the definition so of the I word church. Because... Pero uh, yeah, let me just finish this. Ang, ang whole idea ko, ang whole point ko uh, of having this is to be able to educate uh, Christians, remnants, from whichever church, local church you belong to, uh, for the proper understanding of the Word of God. Kaya ko ayok ayok ng gawin parang official, you know, church talaga. Kasi ang ang mga yari nyan, uh, parang uh, kasi ang idea ko is just to be able to influence other people. Eh. It doesn't matter kung saan ka galing. Hmm. You know, but pa parang kayo. Now, what, for example, okay? Yeah, but, but I'm trying to tell you is, Mike. I'm just trying to tell you. Tawag lang yan sa congregation mo, whatever. It's just a house church. It's a church made of members that is being held in a house. In lang yun. Yeah. Nothing uh, of Pero this. kasi uh, iba pa rin ang definition ng house church. Uh, kasi the word church right now, okay, has been diluted. Now, for example, other people will say it's a church. Kung talagang you know, completo kayo, merong kayo, merong pastor, merong ah, may worship, merong program, so church kayo. Kahit sa bahay, church kayo. Meron naman iba. Ah, hindi church kayo. Pag talagang yung congregation talaga kayo, yung ah, meron talaga kayo pangalan, you know, na register, na register kayo sa sec. ABC Church of whatever. So, yun ang church. Kaya, even yung mga, especially large churches, no? Um, the, the small group, they will say, ah, hindi church yan. 
Kasi ano lang yan, small group yan ng church. But in reality, scripturally speaking, where two or three gather in the name of Christ, of believers, that is a church. So in that sense, whether you call me a garage church, a house church, a under a tree church, it doesn't matter. It is a church. But it is not a church in the definition of the majority of the people around us. At saka, yun ang gusto kong sabihin, na we are not in that sense a church. For me to be able to attract other people who are truly in Christ and be properly discipled. Y- yun, ang, yun ang goal ko. Okay? So... Wala naman law dyan sa Amerika against what you're doing, right? Um, I don't know. Um, right now, it's just a small group in a sense na we are gathering. Pero, I, I want ko, ayun na nga kinakatagutan ko eh. Dahil, uh, for example, last Sunday, uh, during our time dito, di ba Sunday night kami dito eh. Uh, punong-puno kami. And, um... Parking spaces, for example, sa neighborhood, na, na uubos na. So, mm. it's just a matter of time that probably a neighbor can complain and say na, yeah. you know, you mag... So, yun... You know, Mike, you better uh, check. Never know when any of your neighbors may complain and then the authorities might check on you kaya, what you're doing to 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 alam mo yon yeah kaya nga that's what i'm saying so it's just a matter of time um eh kasi alam mo sa america typically isang tao isang kotse so kuna sa 20 20 to 25 kami kung 25 kami that that's, that means there are 25 cars na naka-park sa labas so kaya nga you're bothering your neighbors now mm. Although there is plenty of parking. There is plenty of parking. Uh, kasi ang street parking naman dito, eh, dito sa lugar ko, malaki yung street parking. Walang, as far as, you know, you can park, walang problema, makakapark ka. Pero, uh, you know, some, pe- some people might not be comfortable na, you know, uh, ganyan lagi. Tapos alam nila, uy, every Sunday nangyayari yan. So, I don't know. Um, Pray for it. Kailangan yeah. wisdom dyan. Pero, naisip ko na ngayon, alam mo naman, it's either Americano na anti-Asian o kaya Pilipino na ingitero, baka mag, hmm. ano, sa authority, i-check yeah. nyo yung activities dyan every Sunday, registered ba yan, chu-chu-chu, alam mo yun, they might create uh, trouble for you. Yeah, but this is where the sovereignty of God will come in. So even though if we were driven out of here, in the end, it will come to a good result for the glory of God. So either siguro, tayo pa nga di ba? May kanta si Steve Green. When God closes a door, He opens a window. So, yeah, that, that, that's what I think. I mean, you know, kahit ang gera, uh, gera can still come out for the glory of God. The death Kasi of Lazarus my... was for the glory of God. Ano na eh, nanganganak na talaga yung ano eh, you know, word of mouth lang. And people are, a lot of people are hungry looking for someone like you who is, is preaching the word. Talagang word for word, chinachap talaga, talagang intindi nila. Maraming taong naghahanap ng taong katulad ko. Kaya yeah. it's just a matter of time na sasabog yan ng sobrang dami na you know hanapin yan hanapin yan ng people who are remnant okay kasi ang talagang uhaw are those people who are truly in Christ and if they are not properly fed uh, let, let me ano give you uh, an example okay uh, last sunday i have a first time visitor dito um and after that, he t- she texted me. And let me just read what she wrote. Okay, sana ba yan? Uh, telma, telma. Okay. Okay, sabi niya pa. Uh, here we go. I am honored and humbled to hear the word of God 
to your Bible study. Thank you for quenching my thirst and filling my heart with joy. I'm reminded that I will always be a child of Jesus. So grateful I came. God bless you with eternal love and uh, passion for his word, Thelma. So again, yes, it will be uh, appreciated by people who are thirsty and hungry. But uh, the, the sad reality is the majority of church people are not thirsty and hungry because they are there for the festival. That's just reality. Alam ko na yan. I'm not surprised. Um, I've been to several you know, local churches, na, na, nagtalita, and so on and so forth. Not everybody is hungry. That's just reality. Hmm. Kasi Mark, ang problema spirit is not in them. Kaya wala silang hunger, wala silang thirst. That is the point. That's the point. Kaya nga, yun ang sabi ano, yung sa confession of faith kayo na sa Baptist uh, 1689 that the thirst um, comes from the Holy Spirit. That's why evangelism comes first. The reality is Kailangan ang churches, ang focus ng, ng, ng preaching and teaching is evangelism. Eh, ang nangyayari kasi, it is a presumption that the majority of the congregation of the church attendees are already in Christ. Kaya, lahat ng tao sa, sa church, you know, oh brother, oh sister, kumusta na? Good morning church! You know, yung mga terminologies na ganun. Uh, because the presumption is that everybody is in Christ. Hmm. Ako, right now, when I go into a local church, my presumption is that the majority of people are not yet in Christ. Hmm. So even churches are mission field. It's a mission field for apostasy. Hmm. Alam mo, just a, a brief uh, or kami yun ni Isaiah, we went to the Adolf Joseph Prince kasi idol na idol nung pinaka-general manager namin si Joseph Prince. Hmm. Diba, ano, prosperity pastor yun. Yeah. Grab it! Tatlong beses ng Araneta Coliseum yung laki. Puno-puno ng tao nakapila. And how many services does he have in a day? Yep. And you know, when I listened to him, Mm-mm. it was just like someone using the name of God. No verses whatsoever. It was more on how to get rich, how to be this, how to be that. Sabi ko, ano to? Prosperity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ibang and iba. The majority of people, Parang kahit tatlong araneta yun, mga tao. Uh-oh. the majority of people are so-called Christians. I'm sure prinumot pa yan sa mga churches. Uy, darating si ano, Joseph Prince. Uh, yeah. Um, Siya yung yun, sa Singapore. Singapore yan yun, ano, diba? Sarina? Yeah, Singapore yan yun. Yeah, oo. Yeah. Hmm. Best yeah. friend ni Joel Austin. Yeah, oh. magkakasama yan. Sila Joel Austin, uh, lahat yan mga, Kenneth Copeland, si uh, Clefto Dollar, uh, magkakasama lahat yan. They even had a recent conference of all of them. Lahat sila, yung mga prosperity. Meron din sila mga conferences. Imagine that. At yung mga invitado nila, syempre, lahat ng mga prosperity gospel uh, pastors and those who are aspiring uh, to have their so-called anointing. Okay? Who doesn't want to have a large church? Large church, large income. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Yep, answerable to God. And 
Kaya nga, um, yan na yung, but many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I have triple the size of Baraneta uh, I ministered to? Jesus said, I never knew you. Hmm. Away from me, you evildoer. You see, you and I are called to be faithful, not to be, you know, uh, some mega church or, or big Bible study and or, uh, no, we are called to be faithful. Y yun lang yun. We are called to be faithful. So if God has exposed you to a couple of friends, a couple of neighbors or former classmates, then exert your effort and your influence among those people. And God Mike, will... how do you classify ano, yung mga madre at yung mga pare? How will you classify them? Apostate. How can you say they're apostate if what? I don't know. They, if, paano yun if they have totally repented and they believe? I mean, well, they know the gospel. Well, kasi tignan mo, Nicodemus. So you're, you're telling me, you know, there's a situation with Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a Pharisee and he was a member of the Jewish ruling council. So he's, he's not ordinary. He, he's like a, you know, a cardinal or something. Ganun. Now, his transition was slow because in John chapter 3, it looks like most likely he was not a believer yet in John chapter 3. But later on, uh, at the ending chapters, we will see Nicodemus again. And he was at the foot of the cross when Jesus was crucified. So he was no longer fearful. He, he didn't, he didn't come to Jesus at the time of night. He was during the day. Uh, and with, uh, you know, pa si, si, yun, si Joseph pa yun, yung, to put down the body of Jesus. So, I mean, he was totally in the open. Now, if a priest or a madre for that matter Sometimes it will take them time to, to transit, uh, to fully expose themselves to be followers of Jesus. Um, so yeah, yun ang mangyayari. And even if you look sa YouTube, for example, testimony of priests, ang dami that these are former priests who are now you know, fully uh, following Jesus. The same thing with Jews. You look at uh, Messianic Jews, for example. Maraming Jew, they want to believe in Jesus, pero takot sila kasi sa persecution ng family. They'll be ostracized. They will be kicked kick out. Uh, the same thing with Muslim. Uh, there are those who believe in Jesus, pero patago. But in the end, uh, they will come out in the open. So, do I believe that there are true Christians in the Catholic Church? Mga sa congregants? Yes, I do believe it. I believe that there are not many, maybe some, um, who are in Christ. Pares nung text natin sa ano, last, sun, last Saturday, di ba? Some Greeks, di ba? The word some. So, yeah, there yeah. are some. Hmm. Yeah. So, ganun. So, yung mga reformers, Mike, uh -oh. that was during the time of Henry VIII ba? Yung reformers? Uh, Nio Cabisado. Uh, kasi it's a long period of time ang reformers. 15th century and 16th century. So, I don't know who are the sino mga King John and so on. I do not know. Hindi ko... Hindi kasi ako, di ba naalala mo si Henry VIII? He uh -oh. wanted to marry uh Catherine of Aragon, who uh -oh. was a Catholic and he was a Protestant. Yeah. So, then, yeah, pero hindi ko alam talaga yung, yung buong story dyan. But in every generation, in every generation, there is always a remnant. Always. So, it just so happened during the time of Luther, si Calvin, uh, they are all Catholic priests and theologians who... Uh, you know, who, who went against the Catholic Church because they found in scriptures that what is being taught by the Catholic Church is not only not present in scriptures, but is totally contradicting scriptures. Hmm. Totoo yan. Yeah. 
actually you can be considered as a modern day performance yeah i mean uh every person every church every pastor who wants to bring back the congregation back to sola scriptura are technically reformers so Re reformation has not ended because uh, even today that the deformation is continually happening on deformation so you know right now as the methodist church in of america now they have deformed the church by permitting not only women but even lgbtq uh, uh, men and women to be pastors that is totally uh, that, is, that is totally deformed they marry same sex At ngayon, lumalabas na now gay gay priests yeah gay priests are already accepted sa catholic exposed na sila hindi na sila nagtatago yeah so so pero i don't know the official stand ng catholic doctrine is it that they actually permit uh gay people to be priests yun ang hindi ko alam sa Methodist Church kasi it's official that they permit same-sex marriage and LGBTQ pastors so yeah the church is being deformed so are there Methodist people who want to reform the Methodist Church I'm quite sure there are people who want to reform it but are there former Methodist Church who have left oh yeah there's plenty of have left the same thing with SBC, Southern Baptist Church. Meron ba mga SBC pastor who left SBC? Oh yeah, plenty. Are there Southern Baptist leaders who stayed to try to reform back the SBC? Yes. Is it difficult? Yes. Okay. Kaya maraming reformers who were crucified and burned to death when they were trying to reform the Catholic Church. Kaya yung mga nababasa natin dati, yung mga story na yung mga they are burned because they are witches. In reality, those people who were burned and uh, accused of being a witch, they are actually true believers. That's the true history. Because they were going against the Catholic Church. Oh, kaya si Anne Boleyn was burned. Hmm. Yeah. And Pauline was burned because she was a reformist. Oh, you dati kasi bawal magbasa ng Bible. So if you are reading the Bible and you are trying to interpret the Bible for the common people, then you are a witch because only the priests must be able to to interpret scriptures. Hawak nila ang scriptures kaya they were hawak nila sa leeg lahat ng tao. Kaya itong sa 1689 Baptist Confession, they're saying, whether you are learned or unlearned, you have enough knowledge from scriptures, uh, the doctrine of salvation, soteriology. It's not just for the elite. It's for everybody. The Catholic Church, back then, they were saying, no, it's not just for the elite, but it is only for the priests who are ordained by the Catholic Church. Pero kahit ngayon, uh, ano pa rin yan eh? that, that idea is still being carried even among ano, among uh, the evangelicals. Si pastor lang, siya yung talaga merong authority. That's wrong, that's wrong idea. You as a quote unquote a common congregant, a common believer, you have the fullness of the Holy Spirit in you that has the total confirmation from the word of God and be able to correct and even rebuke your pastor. Dapat ganun. Eh, pero ngayon hindi eh. Ah, si pastor siya eh. Siya ang may alam. You see? You see the application of that 1689 confession? That's a very important. What he's saying is you need to be a Berean. A Berean, if they found that Paul was in error, kahit Apostle Paul pa siya, they will be saying, Uy, Apostle Paul, mali ka dyan. Remember si Paul? Si Paul rebuked Peter. Kumbaga, si Peter was the 
older, mas nauna naging apostle than Paul. Pero when Peter was no longer eating with the Gentiles because he was looking down on Gentiles, si Apostle Paul rebuked Peter harshly. See? At that time, si Paul was an underdog. Pero he took the authority of scriptures and rebuked Peter. Eh, pero tayo ngayon, hindi na eh. Wala, wala nang ganun eh. Kasi ang authority is the office. The authority is never the office. The authority is not the board. The authority is the word of God. That, that is the whole point that. nitong uh, chapter 1 of the uh, Baptist Confession of Faith. Okay? Kaya nga, sayang palaga. It's really a pity that we do not follow this anymore. Yeah. So, you know, become a... Uh, look for the remnant among you, around you. Uh, invite them to the book of John. Because uh, the remnant, once they start to hear and see na ang word is being taught, ooh, they will, you know, yung thirst nila, yung hunger nila will be quenched. 